Yes, exactly. That's what we needed. <laughs> now we can hear each other. Nice. Measure Camp special. Ten years of Measure Camp. Pretty much, yeah. The fifth Measure Camp Amsterdam. Yes, it's our birthday. So I'm here with uh, Martijn van Vrede. You've been at every Measure Camp Amsterdam? Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. In the organization, right? Yep. And Peter O'Neill, the, the godfather. <laughs> <laughs> the Measure Camp godfather. He doesn't like that one. No, right? exactly. <laughs> that's, that's why I do it, right? That, that's Jim Stern. It's not like <laughs> so tell me, Peter, let, let's take it back. What, what sparked you to start with Measure Camp? Let's take it uh, from the beginning. Uh, from the beginning. So I mean, I, I got dragged along to other unconference events. I went to, I think it was Bar Camp London 5. Bar Camp, you said? Bar Camp. That sounds amazing. Uh, that was the name for it. Um, it's an unconference for developers, mm. mostly developer there. Um, coming out of some event in the US, I think it was first, where they had an event cancel last second, and let's just run something anyway, and we'll have no schedule and just do it impromptu. So bar camps came from that, and a two-day two day event at eBay offices, and people sleeping overnight, and it was developers, very intense. <laughs> but it was still the chats that I had there between sessions and over lunch and skipping sessions was way too technical for me. It was just really interesting. I loved the energy from that. And then I went along to a, a product camp for product managers, a um, social camp for social media, helped organise a tweet camp for Twitter. Going back, I just loved the whole way that this whole works. So when an opportunity came along with a few other people in London to say, we want to run an event in London above and beyond an e-metrics or a meetup, I got them drunk basically and proposed while well, they were drunk, we should do it an unconference style. And I was freelancing, um, I had more time on my hands and I managed like sort of, sort of had time actually put into trying to lead us, push things forward mm -hmm. and just ran with it. Um, and that's where it all came from. And the, the first event, we, we had not a clue what we're doing. I mean, I had no idea how to run events. I still don't know how to run events, but I really had less idea back then and no one else had any idea either. And luckily the venue came from my friend who had driven to the first bar camp. He was working in Mozilla. And so we were like, cool, you can use Mozilla offices for free. Brilliant. We managed to get, I think, four sponsors on board. It was enough to cover the cost. We had to basically cover catering. I, I, grabbed, I asked the cafe owner from where the cafe used to get lunch from around the corner, who was working nearby the Mozilla office. I said, hey, could you do breakfast and lunch for us on a Saturday? And he went, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> so we arranged that. I had to like, run food across the road that way. We had Starbucks for coffee runs, big cartons of Starbucks. We threw it together and yeah, it all sort of worked out. And people were starting saying, I'm, I've got my ticket, I've booked um, travel accommodation. I'm going, travel accommodation? This sounds sound very serious now. We actually have to deliver on this. Yeah, the pressure pressure was on. Yeah, and it was it was just a great day. I mean, um, things went horribly wrong in the background. Um, I'd meant to arrange pizza for lunch as well, and all of it arranged. And it got to like sort of 12 o'clock, I like, cool, everything's going well, everything's a great day. Oh, shit, the pizza, I forgot to order the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, I noticed, so it looked so it went quite smooth. Yeah, this, it outside. solved itself. Which is what Measure Camp's done ever since, it's solved its, solve its own problems. You can't see the problems behind the scenes. Yeah. And it was, it was about half of the day. I mean, for me, we actually, we, we did pre-arrange some speakers, and I said, let's put a few on the board already, because no one knows what this concept is. And I went to the first session, the biggest room, this guy was speaking on his talk, and he was just giving a presentation. People all being sort of quiet, going, what is this? I'm just going to listen here. I went, this is wrong. I've got a question. Halfway through, is what well, you don't do the presentation, you could do it at an yeah. unconference. And someone else, I gave my sort of question, he went, I called this one. I was, actually, I, I think something different to that. I went, this is fine, underway now. Yeah. And I remember like halfway through, one of the other organisers saying, Peter, this is, this is going really well. I couldn't imagine it would work like this. And I said, Sorry, I was probably speaking too fast when I was trying to explain it to you. It didn't quite make sense. I didn't explain it properly. And he went, actually, no, the way you described it is that what's happening. I just couldn't imagine it without experiencing it. And that's been, I think, interesting as well for so many organisers. As much work they put into it themselves, actually get organising it. And to have actually been to a major camp and experienced it, you, you can't know what it's like properly. Yeah. So that's been great as well. Yeah. I've, I've had a couple of interviews here today already and I've asked everybody about like about their Measure Camp experience, but why, why should somebody who, who is not aware of Measure Camp, who has never been, why should they come? And they're all, they're not talking about the, 
you know about the content or it's all about the people and about the experience right so that's i think that's a i think that's a common theme uh it's definitely also the community and yeah and just finding related things in each other as well yeah. and it doesn't have to be about the content for sure yeah and that's been universal as well that's the biggest thing i've found going now to mish camps around the world is that i've heard again again people say well Mission Camp's great in London, but it won't be quite as good here because people are shy here. Our culture, our nationality, we're a shyer people. And then 15 minutes in when the board's pretty much full, and we're going, how did this happen? And <laughs> I once had a vendor say, we spend months trying to find speakers for our conferences. 15 minutes in, you've filled a board. This is not fair. How's yeah. that work? Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. It does. And there are a very wide variety of topics as well. It's not like it's just about one thing and everyone can speak about that. So yeah. in... That makes it interesting as well to kind of see where the market is going just by looking at a session board. You know exactly what's on people's minds. And that's yeah. something that's very fascinating to me because if you take a snapshot now from the, the session board in, in Amsterdam and you do the same maybe in Copenhagen, they will have probably a slightly different version of it. Uh, but over like the course of five years that we've been doing this in Amsterdam, you can actually see what people are working on and how things are progressing inside of our community as well. Yeah. Also, one thing I've noticed is at the beginning of the day, you'll see the set, the premeditated talks, let's call them, right? So the, the topics everybody already yeah. figured out, like this is a big topic. So today it will be Google Analytics 4, right? The, it's a big topic. And But then at the end of the day, you'll see the more interesting discussions pop up. Like people have figured out during the day something and they're like, let's host the let's host a round table about this and just talk with some smart people that are around here about this topic. And usually those are the most interesting <laughs> ones, you know? The ones yeah, that's that the stuff that comes up over the course of other sessions where people yeah. get inspired or feel more comfortable sharing as well. Yeah. Uh, because not everybody's here for the fifth time. So it's some people are not really sure they want to run a session mm -hmm. or they're a little bit hesitant or haven't prepared anything. And then they figure out like, it doesn't really matter. If no. I have a question, I'll ask it and that's it. And they yeah. can actually do that and feel comfortable doing that. Yeah, because that was another thing I wanted to um, highlight is that I think for a lot of people, Measure Camp is actually their first time public speaking as well, right? So that's a, probably a big element, at least for the people I've, I've seen around me. It's always a, a big thing, you know, go to Measure Camp and do your first public talk. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that again around the world, different cultures, different sort of backgrounds, and seeing the people who were really shy and quiet and... But it's their first, like third measure camp, put them to the courage to go on door session and absolutely terrified, shitting themselves beforehand. Then they do it and it, it goes well. It always goes well. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're thrilled them after going, that was so much fun. I want to do it again and again and again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should mention as well, but like the first, I ran two sessions at bar camp. I went to like one each day and the first one, remember I got dragged there by a friend. I had two people turn up, of which one was my friend. <laughs> <laughs> That was my first session experience. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is, that's one thing for me for Measure Camp is that the confidence can build in people. Like, this is your first chance to run a session probably ever anywhere. But if you can get to like it here, one, in the workplace, talking to clients or if you're a client side, speaking to management, etc., you'll definitely get more confident. Um, and also hopefully from that, the chance to then speak at um, other conferences. Like we had, when I was trying to run a... a or when I speak as free metrics, I'd pick and choose people I saw at um, measure camps to come and speak there who were great speakers, great topics. Yeah. It was an open, a foot in the door for that. Well, something I do as well. Um, I also am a program manager for other conferences and I'm, I'm basically scouting here too. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I see new, uh, new and different faces that uh, talk about different things and it's, it's for me also good to find these people in this, uh, in this, this kind of community. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I the it gives a real safe feeling to you. You can just book a small room and mm. just do your first talk in a room, you know, where not more than 20 people will fit in anyway, right? So you're, it kind of gives people a little bit of a, a small step up. So yeah. if, if somebody's watching this and never spoke but wants to do a, do a talk, then come to a measure camp. That's uh, probably yeah, a good I've also thing. seen partnering up happen yeah. as well. Like one yeah. person is not really comfortable speaking yet and the other person is, then you just do the disc run the discussion together, you know, and Definitely. you will see the like the the combination of them also changing. First, it's only the experienced person <laughs> doing most of the talking, and then slowly but surely you see taking initiative from the other side as well. So yeah, yeah it's there, there's so many different ways of, of, of using this as a stepping stone as well. Yeah, and with that as well, I mean, organizers any measure company in the world will would happily help out as well. Like if someone said, reached out in advance and said, "Hey, I would like to talk." First of all, I'm really shy about it, nervous about it. Can you help me out? 
and would arrange a mentor, help them practice it, would have a second person there with them, whatever's required. The biggest thing for us is almost the thrill for organisers of how people speak for the first time and seeing yeah. how they react, uh, react to it. That's why we put our time into it. Yeah, because at the end of Measure Camp, right, there's usually the, the, the closing session. And one of the, one of, I think the, one of the default question is who spoke for the first time, right? Yep. Right. And uh, that's probably the biggest applause uh, that there <laughs> is during the day, which it should be. So that's always, uh, yeah, that's always a nice moment. So, Peter, you started this, let's call it, you know, accidentally you rolled into it and it exploded, right? Like, well, how many Measure Camps are there around the world? Do you even know? Like, uh, how, how many cities? Someone had account recently, I think it was over 30, possibly up to 40. I'm not quite sure because we sort of, we had about half a dozen or so being created and then put on hold thanks to COVID. Oh, so yeah, there's a lot yeah. more actually happening, which haven't actually happened yet. There is a new one, which is 95% confirmed for later this year. I'm not sure I can sort of say it now. Ah. If I can even pronounce the city name correctly, um, Baku, I think it is. Azerbaijan. Oh, oh really? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, I think so for anyone who's listening here, wants a trip to Azerbaijan and well, participate in that. Um, yeah. I think it's October time. Um, it'll be announced more officially when things come out, but that's yeah. that's going to be an exciting event. Again, to break into a new place and to bring Measure Camp to a new community. Yeah. That's always very exciting. Yeah. I think I think last week we were brainstorming about, uh, people were brainstorming about Measure Camp Dubai, like a central <laughs> hub, like everybody can fly in, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what have been, the, what has been the, well, you've probably been to a Measure Camp in Australia, or no? I'll yeah. say for the first one, yeah. So <laughs> aligned, I was going back for a friend's wedding, so we actually had Measure Camp Melbourne to yeah. start things off one weekend at the side of that. I was going to ask what's the, f you know, the furthest away from here you've went, but yeah, for you that's kind of like <laughs> a little bit going back home as well. <laughs> well, look, the craziest one in that case, differently, was yeah. um, I went to the US for a work trip. Um, I was a Google Linux partner, so I met first San Francisco. I was, my agency had been bought by another agency, I actually went and saw their offices in San Francisco, flew up to Vancouver's their office there, flew across to New York, the office there, I went, okay. It was a long flight from London to um, San Fran. The trip home from New York's gonna be like short, actually quite nice in the trip. Until I realized that the first, I think it was the first one, Measure Camp Istanbul was happening that weekend. I mean, I have to go to that <laughs> to be part of this. So I ended up flying, since we were after two, one, two weeks away. Um, San Francisco, so London to San Francisco, San Francisco to Vancouver, Vancouver across New York, New York over London <laughs> <laughs> to Istanbul. Landing in the morning, there for the day, uh. <laughs> and then flying home that night back to London was a, that was a painful trip. So, I mean, and London's it's been amazing. The places I've seen, people I've been hanging out with, has been incredible. But in a way, some of the experiences has been it's been work to be honest, but worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, because you've been involved in this for for basically ten, 10 years, years, and you yeah. you're you're actively attending. I think you you handed over sort of London. Uh, after a while, like the organization? Yeah, I tried to step back. I think it was about the 10th one. I tried to step back from that point. I was still running the finances for them, but I was trying okay, to be yeah. less involved. I yeah. mean, that's... I was just trying to think ahead, like seeing... So when I first got asked, I was about the fourth measure camp, fourth measure camp, I'm um, having lunch with these guys. I went, Peter, this is really fun here in London. Can we do it in Paris? I mean, well, yeah, you can actually. I mean, here's the rules <laughs> to follow, not? the guidelines for yeah. it. Let go. I think I can't remember Amsterdam was like the, the fourth or fifth one. Yeah, we got that little A4 as well with some uh, some guidelines and some <laughs> yeah. suggestions and stuff. Exactly. Which is, I slept after that document. I say every time. <laughs> um, but the point I was trying to make there was I sort of knew from um, other people's experiences that these events can go worldwide. That's fine. But also I was conscious of the fact that if you have one person trying to run everything, it's something that it needs to be passed on or it's going to die by itself. You can't be involved the whole way through. Yeah. So it's quite deliberate trying to pass on in London after like sort of five, six years at other group. Unfortunately, we had two people probably leave at the same time. So it's sort of been struggled a bit since then. It's great, but it didn't quite go from the hand over hand a little bit of life would have been. Yeah. We had a few sort of troublesome sort of years there. Um, and now I definitely want to try and organise local ones, um, but if I help coordinate it globally, and I think I've been saying this for a couple of years now, COVID put things on hold, want to try and create more of a central couple of people, paid positions even, mm. to do the global coordination, because right now it's all inbound. People saying, hey, we would like to do a measure camp in Azerbaijan, in South Africa. I'm like, cool, that's great, here's some ideas, letting it go. Someone who actually is being paid to look after it would then reach out and say, how can I help out? Let me create the website for you, this for you. Mm. Find another five volunteers for you. 
hey, we should really do one in South America. Let me, using Peter's contact list, reach out to people across South America and the agencies there yeah. and get things going. It's a lot of work, which I don't have the time for anymore with a young child and other priorities in life. Yeah, I get that. Well, so maybe uh, somebody who's uh, listening to this maybe can reach out. <laughs> <soon>. <laughs> Happily so, yes. So, Mercy Camp Amsterdam 5th edition. Yes. Not 5th year. Something, <laughs> something came up. Yeah, I don't COVID. know what it was, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, how's it been for you? It's been very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I know Measure Camp from, uh, from London. I attended that a bunch of times and I really liked it a lot. So, um, I think like seven years ago, I, uh, I went freelance myself, just like uh, Peter did. And I figured this would be a great opportunity for me now that I ha kind of have my own agenda, my own calendar to fill, that this would be one of the things that I wanted to do and, and also contribute to the digital analytics community in the same time. So, um, so yeah, it's been really fun. And we have a really good group that helps out with, uh, with organizing the event. So we're running it very smoothly by now. So it's really yeah. nice. Yeah, a couple of uh, people have been doing it for a couple of years already, right? I think we're like four of us have been doing it for five years and others have, uh, have started to join later on, I think like three years ago. And now even this year, uh, we had a new person uh, jump in as well. Yeah. So. Well, that's great to see. So. Um, I hear this year you you have managed to uh, get us a festival. Outside. Yes, yes, want to be a great party. Want to want to elaborate? Want to make the people who watch this jealous so that the next time they'll join? Oh yeah. Well, I don't know if we're gonna do it the next time as well. You, you can only uh, turn five once. They have so. to they have to figure that out, you know, by coming. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, no, we have a really really nice area here. This this place where we are now is very artsy and uh, yeah. it's a really good environment. Yeah. If you walk outside, there's a, a really big parking lot and it's quite empty. But we are going to fill it up with uh, with food truck, uh, with some music. Bouncing um, castle. There <laughs> may or may not be a bouncing castle. I'm not gonna <laughs> make any promises on that. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, we're we're just gonna have a like an actual party, like a birthday yeah. party, and uh, and really have some fun. It's beautiful weather out now for uh, for a little bit of <laughs> in touch terms. Yeah, 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 terms, yeah. You know, like uh, it's not raining, so it's good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it should be a, a fun couple of hours as well. Yeah, definitely. I'm always amazed, like for for a free conference. Uh, I, we were at London uh, last week. It was all also organized very well. Yep. Uh, Amsterdam as well. How how big of a role do the sponsors play in that? I, I assume a, a really large role. Huge. Yeah. yeah. If if you look at you know how we finance this, it's only sponsors. So yeah. we are really at the uh, at the hands of uh, of people who care about this community as well. Um, yeah. So the companies that are sponsoring now are doing an amazing job for us, and they are actually really helpful in contributing to this uh, conference in other ways as well, by content and by just being good attendees as well. So it's uh, yeah, it's definitely a huge yeah. contribution to us. And, and they have to really get it as well, the concept of Measure Camp, which can be hard without being one before, but to, to bring along the nice sort of giveaways, which makes sense, makes it a bit of a fun experience, but also to understand and appreciate they won't get everyone's email address. They can't do hard selling, which for a lot of companies, like even chatting people recently, um, because they get told us they have to deliver an ROI. And for companies, they probably there's no direct ROI from a measure camp, unfortunately for them. Yeah. There's a lot of long-term branding, community support and participation. And there'd be a lot of, I mean, not a lot, but definitely some softer leads coming through from this as well. Yeah. yeah, I've, but, I, yeah. I, I've once uh, described measure camp, uh, like one of the benefits of measure camp is that because it's on a Saturday, there's no salespeople. You know, like, like the, there's only people who actually want to be here, you know, who, yeah, who, really, who really enjoy it. And, and the same goes for the, the sponsors. They have their boot. You can go talk to them. They're great people, but they're not going to, they're not tackling you down. You know? They're running <laughs> sessions themselves. They're, exactly. They're, they're yeah. just attendees at, this, at exactly. the end of the day. So, yeah, that's, that's the big difference as well. Exactly. So that's, a, I think, for me, that's a, with a lot of great events, then, you, you know, it gets stuffed down your throat a little bit, you know, and, and that's, uh, yeah, that's not the case for Magic Camp. So I think that's a, that's a, a great balance. And yeah. some of our sponsors do, like, now sponsor multiple Magic Camps around the world and have been doing it for a lot of years now as well. Yeah. So really appreciate their support. I heard, I heard last week Call Trek sponsored you guys since the beginning. I think so, yeah. yeah. Call Trek was there from day one. Yeah. Um, I think uh, John, John Woods, his agency, Sharper Head, was sponsoring it there, but actually his old... Vendor that he used to run there as well. Argento is one of the very first sponsors. Yeah, so that's great. Yeah. You know, people will be sponsoring it uh, all that time. Yeah. So looking forward, um, let's start with Measure Camp Amsterdam. What, what, what's your, what's your vision next five years? 
<laughs> where you want to go. <laughs> to keep you on go? going the way we are, basically. I mean, we, I think we found a good balance in terms of the size of the, the, the attendance. Uh, we have about 130 people showing up every year, and we feel that that's a perfect set uh, in terms of you know having the, the the interpersonal connection that you can have with such a such a sized group. Um, if we would go bigger, it would probably become less personal to us, um, and going smaller would be yeah there wouldn't be enough content to actually uh, get around. So uh, in that sense, that's that's where we want to be, um, and we we always try to add a little bit of extra something. This year, it's, uh, it's the festival. We've also supported uh, NGOs uh, during, uh, with, with the actual content as well, helping yeah. them out with their website and helping yeah. them out with their analytics. Yeah. Um, so those things we try to initiate and also kind of trigger people to, to think just outside of their own comfort zone a little bit and, and beyond their borders of, of, of what they are accustomed to when they go to an event like this. So I think we will probably try to do some, some of these things again. Um, and that's it, pretty much. Yeah, we're, we're just happy the way it's going. Yeah. Yeah, well... Don't change a winning team, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and for for you, Peter, like looking at it, uh, you know, at the measures camp global scale, you already you already mentioned some of it. But what, what's your what's your vision? Like the next five years of measure camp, what do you see? Total world domination. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I mean it, it's definitely expanding it. And again, this is where I, I need to get to more aggressive myself, is a bit more focused to to find the person or people to actually help manage that process. Um, definitely expanding around the world. I think. There's so many different people around the world who work in digital analytics and probably feel quite alone or as the ones that are specialist in their region without knowing everyone else around the corner who's there as well. Yeah. Um, I want to help out those people. So it is trying to help those communities out. So having metro camps in South America, in Africa, in Asia, et cetera, through a lot more of the US. Canada had been talked about before COVID, then got put on hold. So it is just expanding it further like that. I can... Again, I've got to find time to actually get this all organised, but we had to run virtual ones during COVID times. It was difficult, and it's not the same thing, but it was still, it was good. It was as good as you could get virtually. I think there's still space to run the virtual ones in parallel to the in-person events, um, to some degree, potentially to introduce to a new area, like Virtual Mission Camp South America, run it virtually first, get the experience to then lead to doing it online, to, um, in person, I still like the idea of doing once a year a 24-hour virtual measure camp <laughs> and rolling it through through different time zones. Uh, it's a lot of work to get organised. If you want to volunteer to organise that, let in get me in touch, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's things like that as well to keep it sort of fun. I mean, although at the same time, the, the basic in-person measure camp concept, I don't think we need to or would want to play with too much. It works. It's, it's very simple. You come to a venue, you have a blank session board, you have this rough time slots, this many rooms, just go for it. We shouldn't. We don't need to mess with that. The concept works. Um, having extra fun things like festivals. Um, having seen a couple of actually do it, we did it last time, Winter Camp Europe, um, having a giveaway to people. Everyone does a talk, gets a memento of giving a talk, especially first time speakers. Bringing those sort of things out more universally to all measure camps be great, but the basic things there. But yeah, it's, it's just expansion. Like you said, world domination. I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds great. So, anything else you guys wanna wanna mention to the people watching this, thinking about maybe joining a measure camp? Joining a measure camp definitely do. Yeah, <laughs> volunteering for a measure camp, right? Yeah, I mean, this is there. There's basically no. There's no barrier on, on, on just visiting one. Um, and if you're in a company with location. Getting the ticket is hard. And getting the <laughs> ticket is the only thing that will probably cause you for it, yeah. But even then, you know, there's, there's, there's so many around the world by now, especially in Europe, there's no yeah. real reason not to join. Um, and at least have a nibble at what this is. You know, you, if, if you don't like it, that's fine, but probably you will, because it's a very different experience and uh, most people really enjoy this type of uh, community as well. I mean, it is not quite for everyone. Of course. There's yeah. more for, yeah, this sort of, this participation part of it. I mean, it might be too much. They'll sort of kick back and learn. But yeah, no, I think it's great for most people. Unfortunately, I'm becoming more aware um, that the weekend, I think today's always been a great thing. People have to be, one, to go there. It's not a day off work. So actually, it's great for that. Some will miss out because they've got other obligations, especially childcare. Yeah. That's really unfortunate. It's hard to work around that. It is, it is what is, unfortunately. It's a balance there. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, I think it is, yeah. For anyone who's never been to Measure Camp and is a bit sort of aware about, I don't know anyone who's going to be there, please 
I have the courage to come along to it. Um, we're a very friendly bunch. Um, people will be welcoming to you, and you can, if you have to, hide in a corner for a while, but then hopefully you'll come out and talk to people as well. There's enough corners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, for people who are here, running a session is the best thing. It's the biggest thrill to someone. I mean, it's terrifying in advance when you do it, but like everyone who's done so has loved the experience, and yeah, it's a big thrill to get there and get applause at the end of it. Um, for anyone who's lives in a place out of Mission Camp, you can bring it there. There are some rules to follow. And one, actually, one thing I've sort of learned over time is you can't, this can't be the first community event, particular length in your area. You have to be able to run meetups first and have a certain size. If it's less than about 80 people, Mission Camp is not going to work for the participants. It's going to be a bad experience. So you've got to try and build something up first there and then bring Mission Camp on board as well. But um, getting in touch back, we, we, we do want to expand further. Cool. Great. Thanks a lot, both for this uh, talk and for this great event that uh, I've been attending uh, for a couple of years now. And yeah, you've love been uh, a good supporter as well. Definitely, so. <laughs> definitely. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. I think uh, we have one more session and then uh, we have a festival to go yeah, to. Yeah, then we'll go party. <laughs> <laughs> great. great. Thank you both. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks.